Hey guys, welcome back to the channel for some more gameplay footage for DayZ.63. Now this features the content that was in the Gamescom demo videos that we all watched online and on Twitch. However, this is the first time that we got to see the gameplay demo in high definition. And you guys can find the original video on the DayZ development YouTube channel. A link directly to the video will be included in the description box below if you guys wanted to watch it without my opinions and commentary. Now, we don't get to see anything incredibly new, although there's lots of stuff in Daisy.63 that we haven't seen yet that will be at the experimental launch for beta. Um, but this is going to be covering all the things that we kind of already know. But I don't know if it's just me, but most of the Gamescom footage uh, wasn't at higher detail and it was in very short interview clips. So we heard the developers discuss them and we seen small little like gameplay clips, but nothing that is like a 16 minute gameplay uh, playthrough. So this is kind of what we're going to be seeing here. And at the very start of the video, you're seeing all of the new character model choices. I know that that has been a concern, like kind of a little bit more diversity and a little bit more selection with the character models is nice. And what you're seeing here is something that, again, we've known for a little while. Uh, whenever you're going to be alt looking around the world, there's that added additional weight to your character. Whenever you turn your character's body, uh, you can now physically see that represented as well. Eugene also decided to throw in a comparison directly to Daisy.62. So for all you guys that are saying it doesn't really look any different, the camera angle completely in a different area, uh, the transitional animations between prone, crouch, and stand are also changed. Um, and the looks to me anyway, you can definitely see the new graphic fidelity changes that were not included in 0.62 with the roads as well. So not everything in the 0.62 graphical fidelity patch was introduced. So you can definitely notice some subtle atmosphere changes and changes to a lot of the textures as well that we didn't quite see yet. One of the big things that the developers were really happy to share was if you fall from higher distances, you don't die anymore. You just go through an animation and depending on that height, we'll change what type of animation that you go into and how long you're going to be delayed and of course being able to run up hills will now be a thing so i know this has been one of the biggest like soft complaints that the community has had the slowness of actually traveling through the map with any sort of elevated area that is going to be resolved for now and into the future and they're going to be tweaking a, li a little bit more uh, but this is kind of what they want this is the direction that they're going in so we'll probably see maybe subtle like subtle changes like especially to the animations and who knows maybe things like hiking boots that would be a cool idea if you have like hiking boots on you can go up a little bit faster it would be interesting to see things like that added in but that's not confirmed that's just pure speculation we get to see Eugene picking up an MP5 and manipulating that new inventory. Everything seems to have more slots available. I think that's just more grid options. So to make room for smaller items for crafting, which just makes sense. As the game continues, you're going to have to have um, a little bit different inventory movement because like a can of beans and a 22 round don't take up the same amount of space. So it makes sense that they're moving into a different inventory system or expanding the inventory to make room for those smaller items so you can do more, especially if you have a backpack like the hunting bag. Now, as you can see, this is going to be huge, I think, for new players. Uh, whenever you are hovering around an item that you can manipulate in the world, it will now tell you that you can press F to pick up this item or press F to interact with that item. Uh, so this is going to be kind of good for new players as well, whenever they see maybe a door that they're quite unsure about opening. Um, but it's just going to make things a little bit easier, especially when it comes to crafting inside of the environment, not in your inventory. You're going to be able to actually see what you're kind of doing without just spamming F and guessing. Now, I'm sure if you've been searching for Daisy.63 videos, you've seen uh, examples of the new melee system before, um, but we got a really good look in this video of going after multiple targets, how it just uh, correctly uh, goes for what you're looking at or the enemy that is closest to you. So you can really just swing the barn doors um, and you see that the character is injured. So we have seen those new injury animations when someone is severely injured, it will affect how they can move around in that environment. But one thing that I noticed when watching this the first time, and so did my Twitch viewers, uh, there is no blood right now in the current beta footage. Uh, and there's also, it seems that the blood level and the health level in the lower right uh, don't change. Uh, so I'm sure that is just a bug. 
but I'm gonna just speculate here that maybe they're changing the way blood looks on your character and how you take damage. Uh, if you shoot somebody or if you hit somebody with a melee weapon, it would be cool to get an upgrade with that blood because it really looks, well, a little weird. It looks like you're pooping out like red mist clouds whenever you get shot. So we'll have to see uh, what that looks like closer to experimental. We also get to see that different melee weapons have different animations, like the knife looks really cool now. Obviously, I don't think they changed the damage output that much at all. It takes a lot of hits to kill somebody, so when you switch to that two-handed axe, it only takes a few hits, it seems. So, um, the, I think it's also still going to be like the can in the rock is still going to be incredible because we did see a little bit of gameplay footage with somebody with a can in their hand absolutely kicking somebody's ass who had a melee weapon. So a lot of damage tweaks are going to have to happen to some of these melee weapons because somebody with a hunting knife like you can see here should always be doing more damage than somebody with just a rock and that's just my opinion. Of course, this has been a long wanted feature as well, uh, survivor weathering and shaving. Uh, so we can see an example, the scars all over the character's face and you, he also has a beard and whenever he shaves himself, uh, the beard goes away, but I, I hope this is a bug. The weathering also goes away. So I think they just maybe have to add like a different character texture because you can see here, look at all this face, it's covered in scars. And then boom, he's a plastic surgeon. All of them are gone. It's He's just got a perfect face again. Next up is bloody hands. So whenever you skin animals or humans, unfortunately in Daisy, uh, cannibalism is still very much a thing. Uh, if you do that, you will get bloody hands if you're not wearing gloves, increasing your chance of uh, getting an infection. So gloves, definitely gonna become the new meta. Rolling around without gloves, you're gonna get those bloody hands. But for all you roleplay guys, having bloody hands for some of you crazy psychopath characters out there is just gonna be like some sort of new cosmetic option uh, with the unfortunate trade-off of almost getting infections all the time, which, you know, kind of makes sense. And you can wash off your hands at water pumps uh, and at ponds and any water source, really, you can wash your hands to get that off if you don't like wearing gloves. Next, we see some crafting options. Now, instead of doing everything in your hands, you can set items on the ground and interact with them to craft larger things like this fireplace. And we've seen this again before with some of the lights that were in some industrial areas inside the villages during the Gamescom footage. Uh, but as you can see, you're going to get a more traditional crafting style placement system that you see in other video games. Uh, now it's never a guessing game on where you're going to be placing your items. You can now place them exactly where you want them to. And that's just going to make pl uh, building player bases and setting up camps a lot easier. And again, especially to you roleplay players out there, you guys are going to have more options to make your areas look really cool. Now, my chat and I were wondering this too, and now it kind of makes sense. While we've really only seen a small weapon selection at the Gamescom demo, we've seen an FNX 45, which is the OG pistol, the first pistol ever introduced into the game. The IZH-18, which is a, a single action rifle, 7.62 by 39. Not a very common weapon in DayZ in the current meta. And when I mean common, like I don't see that many people like using them. They're actually very easy to find, but if you find 7.62 by 39, you probably would have found a SKS laying around as well because they're very common to find at military camps. And the ICH-18 is just a worse SKS. So um, the, the reason why we only see these three weapons in the Gamescom demo is because they are currently reworking all the animations for all of the weapons that are currently in the game. And I believe they've been doing this for some time. So they're probably just doing some final touches on most of the guns that are already have been in DayZ for quite some time. And these three were the ones that were immediately ready to go for Gamescom. So I'm hoping to see like the Mosin with the speed loader. Uh, that's one thing that I want to see. Like the speed loaders and the snap loaders in the game right now have literally no purpose. So being able to have that way faster reload animation with those strip clips on the Mosinagant and the SKS are going to make a pretty big difference. Like I can imagine having multiple speed loaders and multiple clips inside of my character's chess rig and having them bound to different buttons so I can quickly reload on the go. That's what I want to see with the reload animations in DayZ. And Eugene delivering once again. I think this was one of the most requested things from the Gamescom footage. Let's see a firefight. 
and there really wasn't any available. Um, there was some, like, a lot of melee action, but we never seen a whole lot of group versus group combat. So they ended the video with a PvP situation at Steroy Military Base, and one thing I want to point out, you see how the recoil follows the iron sights? That's a bug, so by the time it reaches experimental, it probably won't be like that. So I know a lot of people on Twitch when we we're watching this live were commenting on that. One thing that I noticed um, is nobody is really running around with their gun up firing at full speed. You don't see a whole lot of that going on. No serpentining because the inertia has been added into the game. Um, and it still needs to be a little bit tweaked for full sprinting, but for the most part, you're unable to keep that weapon up. And if you keep the weapon up, then you need to be in that ready position and you're slowed completely down, um, making you uh, actually able to use the iron sights. And the crosshair is so wide that I think finding and being accurate with hip fire is still going to be something that you can do, but it's going to be more so for the experienced players because I think there's still going to be that center area on the screen but you're just going to have to uh, get used to where that spot is going to be. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be in nothingness, if that makes any sense. You're not going to have any sort of indication on where the shot is going to be, other than feel with the weapon and experience over time. Uh, you can also notice there that the firing mode and the ranging was at the crosshair, so you'll always know now what firing mode you're in, which is going to be a big change for the rifles that have that available. And I hope that they add that multiple firing uh, capability to the AK-74N and the AKM and some of the other weapons that should have it, but don't. But the guy's completely wounded, he stumbles around and gets killed. And that was a really cool moment. So I really want to thank the Daisy Devs for really addressing a large amount of concerns that the community had during the Gamescom demo and basically saying, hey, we're listening to you guys. We're going to give you the footage that you want until the experimental beta goes live. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I highly recommend watching the uncut uh, 1080p video listed in the description box below. But I'm also just like overwhelmed with the actual positivity that's coming from this video. Just read Read the comments man and it's just it's insanity it's it seems like people are really excited for beta you know all things aside like the development taking too long and all the complaints people just want to see this game succeed and become what it's meant to be and we are finally seeing that happen now so i can't wait for experimental guys it's coming very soon and uh yeah subscribe if you guys want to watch more daisy content and other survival shooters here on the channel and i stream every single day starting at 8 30 a.m eastern standard time and sundays at noon